Hello again, my lovely audience. So nice of you to join me. Hope you're all keeping well and disease free. Hope you're uh, managing to uh, not get too bored and isolated in these days of COVID and lockdown. Well, hopefully the next 20 or so minutes of uh, me talking nonsense about some movie will help pass some of the seemingly endless time. <coughs> now, uh, oh, what have we got news-wise before we start? Yes. Hey. Gone. Shaved it all off. It's getting right on my tits. Well, it wasn't. It was getting on my head. The hair that was on getting on my tits has also been shaved off. But that's a different story. That's for me all my fans. Uh, anyway, this week, uh, a bit of a change to what I was planning to do. Uh, I ha had a, um, a movie planned that I was going to... Obviously, not a movie planned I was going to do. Uh, but then, whilst browsing YouTube, I came across something that, that uh, immediately Q jumped its way to the to the next show. There was this full movie uh, from the uh, Lawson Wells archive at the Kinsey Institute at the University of Indiana. Uh, it's a film called Cricket Snapper. And because it had quite a lurid cover, and based on both seeking an audience and... My God, have I only shaved off one bit of my... No, it's just light. It looks like I've got half a moustache. Anyway, sorry, uh, based on the luridness of the cover, thinking that the, the it might draw views in the same way it drew my attention, I thought I'd give it a look. Anyway, I don't know anything about this apart from I found a Wikipedia page. Uh, it's got two paragraphs on it. Um, the first paragraph says that uh, Cricket Snapper is an independent film uh, directed and produced by Lawson Wells. The film is based on the true story of Barbara Asher, who was charged but acquitted of the manslaughter and dismemberment of Michael Lord, a New Hampshire man who had allegedly suffered a heart attack while chained in her dungeon. Yeah, that that was it. That's that's all I've read. Put away the Wikipedia page. That's enough for me to go into the movie. Ho -ho -ho. Hopefully you're as interested and intrigued as I am. If not, I'm very sorry. I'm trying my hardest. But if you are, should we watch a movie? Ooh, exciting movie time. The opening credits now. Lots of snow-covered trees with a blue filter on them and some spooky music in the background. Cassio era horns coming in. Some graves. More graves. Even more graves. Ooh. Mysterious looking house. And the title, Cricket Snapper. You know, if it wasn't for the blue filters and uh, the spooky music, this would look like uh, a video for holiday homes in rural Indiana. There's a nice farm. Some horses. Horses. Featuring music by Dr. S Anton Sandor LeVay. A.K.A. Head of the Church of Satan. Ah, that's that's given this film some chops. Inspired by a true story. Right, well, I'm expecting a very sensitive, uh, very nuanced take on what was obviously a difficult true crime. It's uh, a sleazy dive bar with uh, sleazy dive music. Oh, and a very vampy woman. And she's playing pool. Oh, and she's putting balls in the pocket left and right. More symbolism, I think. Cut two. Flashing lights, lens flare. Outside. Oh, well, this is this is unusual. So there's a woman in a pig mask and headphones and blindfold being suspended by a swing while said vampy woman from the bar is uh, fastening some block to her rack only now she's not wearing sleazy bar clothes she's wearing very crinkly very revealing leather gear and I just oh sorry PVC gear 
and I'm, I'm wondering just what clips of this I can show on YouTube. Um, oh, that, and now she's flogging him. The naked fellow in a mask. He's not quite naked, he's got like a pausing pouch on. And this pig woman is still sort of swinging round on this sting, swing. Pig woman swinging round on this sting, 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 swing. The stinging is that way. She's swinging around the swing, doesn't know what's going on because uh, she's got the earphones on and the blindfold. The block being hung up is someone called Max Caulfield, who's so powerful and tough. Ow! Oh, she's she's giving Max's nipples a fur old tug and then she's leaving him suspended for a little bit while she goes off to consider what she's going to do to him next. And now it's in her front room. I think it's her front room anyway. It's someone's front room. There's a, um, a, a fat fella in a um, white tank top and blue jeans, drinking beer, screaming at sports on TV. The domino has walked, in walked into the front room and then walked through to the kitchen to grab some drugs. Fat bloke is following her into the kitchen, scratching his belly. And they're, they're uh, getting intimate, pressed against the fridge. And they're talking about Max and his, uh, Max Caulfield and his drug use and his alternative sexuality. Max, help me! <laughs> and Piglet swinging around in oblivion. Oh, fat guy's obviously pissed off. Pissed off dominatrix, he said, why don't you, me, and Piglet go upstairs, and she's got jealous, and she said, I wish we'd never had that slave brought into this house. Max is going full on, struggling against his bonds, heart pounding. Piglet spinning round, not knowing anything. His eyes flutter back under his masked, masked face, and he's deaded. And here we go. Dominatrix woman is walking back into the dungeon and... <laughs> she's pushed his head back, pushed Max, Max's head back like that and he's gone. He's done it again. Now she's slapping his face. And... Uh... <gasps> no, no, no! Ah! He's dead! He's dead! Enter Fat Man. Never, never land. Now they're, str they're struggling to get him down. Get him down from here. Your side, my side. Oh fucking hell, this is such a struggle. I'm trying to get them down from this 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 rack. It's like to me, to you, to me, to you, <laughs> to me. <laughs> All right. And um, Piglet is still swinging round oblivious. Oh, workman's crack from the fat man. That's a bridge too far, that. Oh, her name's Amanda. We need an alibi. He said he was ashamed of it, so he didn't tell his co-worker, so no one knew he was here. So I think we've got a, a red flag safety tip right now. Drop crumbs on that one. Oh, they're going to chuck him in the pond outside and then people will think he got fucked up on drugs and fell through the ice. And now Amanda is going to call someone to arrange an alibi. Amanda's having a bit of a meltdown. But hasn't prioritised getting changed. I wonder why. And now it's, it's cut to like vignette framed heavily blue tinted screen of uh, of them chucking the body into the water. Well, I say Amanda isn't got changed but she is wearing a long black coat which sets off her uh, skimpy attire quite nicely and and fat man is sending her up to the house to clean up. Oh there's a, there's a noise 
Bob? Bob, his name's Bob. Fat man's name's Bob. Bob, what was that? What was that? Bob, Bob, what's that? What's that? I hear a noise. Ah, oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's your imagination. It's nothing. Whoa! <laughs> Bob's fallen over. Oh, no, he's been shot in the back with an arrow. <laughs> I think this might be deviating just a tad from the original true story. A little bit of artistic license, though. And now Amanda's running through the snow in giant bloody heels. And she's doing a better job than Bob did. Oh, ow! And she's stood in a bear trap. And her coat's fallen off. <laughs> I don't know how she's done that. But that was, that was impressive. Oh, now we're back into back into the dungeon. And Piglet is being spun round. Her earphones have been taken off now. And she thinks... She thinks that it's Amanda with her, but it's not. It's it's someone, someone else, some mysterious person. And a blind falls off, and she can see it's not, it's not Amanda, and she's getting killed. She's getting killed by asphyxiation, and um, more Anton Lavey music, satanizing the uh, the scene. And Amanda has been dragged to some shack. And she's been rolled over onto her back. Oh, and now she's been hogtied. And now Amanda's woken up. And the mysterious masked figure has got a knife. He seems to be showing an awful lot more care when he's putting that knife over the uh, the expensive fetish outfit than he does when he's over Amanda's skin. It's cut to a close-up of Amanda's face and the sound of things being cut. Uh, and then the uh, the outfit is undamaged off on the floor next to her. Destroying a uh, expensive fetish outfit is probably beyond the uh, budgetary scope of this movie. As is practical effects because when the, the, there was just a sound of a... <coughs> and it cut. No practical blood effects or anything for the... Uh, or any kind of effects for the uh, the throat slitting. It was just all left to your imagination. So that's it. Bob, Piglet and Amanda all deaded. Okay, so it's the next morning, I assume. Time passes outside where it's snowy. Uh, yeah, snow, more snow, snow, water. <laughs> Cop running, <laughs> Cop has run across the and he almost fell over. He almost fell over because falling over in the snow can lead to arrow-based injuries. This we've learnt. Oh, now, now a cop uh, has approached the uh, the mortician crime scene person, and he's asking what they've got here. And he says, "That's Max Colfax, town selectman." And he asks, "Have you any idea of the cause of death?" And the uh, CSI says, well, he's got bruises here, here, and especially on his ass. I don't imagine that's a nice thing to see in a, a cold, snowy morning. A bruised, bare ass in the snow. Oh, now they've gone to the shack where um, Amanda was dumped. She's practically hogtied, but she should be on her back. That's a bit specific there, Mr. Cop. Oh, and he found, found Bob. He used to be a domestic abuser until he took an arrow to the back. And uh, and this other detective is saying to the... The detective, it seems to be focusing on, so I reckon he's like the new hero. And uh, it's saying, you've been uh, complaining there's no crimes in this small hick town, but now you've got to be careful what you wish for. Oh, and look, I found something on the snow. It's this clicky thing. And it's a souvenir of like, D-Day landings or something. Oh, Jesus Christ, he's turned into Fargo. And the hero cop, or the cop who might be the hero, has just found out about uh, Piglet's body and he recognises her real name. And uh, he seems a bit upset. Now there's like ice cream van music. Well, speeded off footage of people walking up the road. And now female cop and male cop have walked into... Linda, not Amanda, Linda's uh, work premises. There's uh, a giant yellow dildo and an enema bag. 
already I am so normal this film has normalized things so much that saying giant yellow dildo and enema bag just didn't seem out of place at all interesting collection of masks and the cop investigating his crime scene has picked a crop up and gone whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. wonder how this would feel on a tight ass and now they found piglet's body tied up and he's he's very upset this female cop has said uh my college educated friend so that's oh the lovely shot interesting use of depth of field Oh, and he knows Piglet, the cop. College educated cop. College cop. College cop knows, knows Piglet. And uh, he's, he's very emotional about it. Despite the fact he's just going quick, 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 that crop before. <gasps> Michael Berryman's younger brother has showed up. I don't know if he really is Michael Berryman's younger brother, but he looks like it. And he's not, not a cop and college cops shouting at him because he's he's come to onto this crime scene when he shouldn't have done and the xylophone choir has appeared from somewhere well and they haven't appeared but you can hear them in the background about 20 of them none of them in tune pig pen oh this was obviously where piglet was kept oh and college cops found a book which is pocketed some very informative signs good positive self-affirmations dartboard college cop and lady cop aka al and linda no wendy are playing darts and above the dartboard the names are written and al is so skillful he can bounce darts off the dartboard keep chucking them and never one goes in and now he's having a piss Oh, oh, fourth wall broken when he was having a piss. And what my partner calls acting according to societies and the law's dictates of what is right and wrong, I call fucking lying and hiding all that which we know will ostracize us from our fellow man. College cops at the bar. He's got a quaver as a little in his glass and he's getting drunk and he's getting double vision oh god it's so ages since i've been drunk and the college cops blacked out it's morning cut to shot off police station college cops wandering into the office with a hangover he's chatting to the chief we gotta close this case up quick everyone's gonna be watching us the murder the deer and all you've got is a fucking notebook Keep your nose clean, head down, and find me a fucking perp. And, and, and the chief says, if I go down on this one, you're going down with me. So, obviously, they're getting into the whole sort of, like, sexy swinging thing, too. Al is uh, looking through the uh, address book, contact book. Oh, and he's got a, a, a starred name, Helena. Oh, and they're off to a strip club. Well, he's met Helena. She sat at the bar and she said, will you buy me a cocktail? And a woman stripper in the background just slapped her ass. She just asked, what kind of cop are you anyway? I'm college cop. Oh, no, he's now snogging her. Right, so college cop has taken the uh, mysterious World War II artifact to uh, the lap dancing club and giving it to a lap dancer who has identified it as a whistle. You see, this is what I like. I like a police force that is, is willing to contract in outside experts. Oh, now, yeah, more lap dancing. And Helena, Helena is now giving Al a lap dance and he's putting money in a stocking. This Casio music is just Oh, Jesus Christ. I hope this wasn't what they had on the earphones for Piglet. Poor girl, that would have been an awful way to die. Oh, now, College Cop says, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. My boyfriend, Todd, he gets insanely jealous if I talk to anyone else. The woods. 
car driving through the woods. Going to hit the cameraman. Right, he's interrogating Todd, who's got baggy jeans, white t-shirt, bandana, and he's chopping up meat. And, and Todd's just said, you must be standing too close to the oven because I spell bacon. Todd, he knows Todd because Todd was a criminal. I spent my time in a big house. Oh, and and Al's just punched him and he's holding his face over the uh, over the grill. And now he's, he's uh, getting drunk at his home desk and he's got Piglet's pig mask and a pig collar and a top secret journal and he's in his underpants sat at his desk. Oh, we need we need to recruit this person to um to cancel comics. They've, they've got an art style that, that that we would appreciate. Oh, and and, and the voiceover saying that they hypnotise her, and how much she loves it. Two cars have ominously parked up on the road. Who could it be? It's college cop and. That fella from Sparks. Oh, and now we've got Elena's house. And she's um, just wearing an apron and a thong. And she's chained to the floor. And college cops arrived. God, that chain's making a noise as it's being dragged across the floor. Some, some, uh, some singing over a... A quite a vanilla sex scene between a college cop and Helena Helena, whatever her name is. We just got a flash of the college cop's pubes, which we can't, of course, see on um, on YouTube. But let me assure you, they were uh, very well groomed. He obviously takes care down there. That's the benefit of a college education. Uh, she's doing a bit of throat squeezing on him. So Al and Wendy are getting hot dogs and coffee in the morning doing police stuff. Oh, her, her DNA uh, trace evidence all washed away by that slut Mother Nature. Right, and he's now trying to chase up Helena to, um, to hook up with her again whilst drinking vodka from the bottle. He's going to start listening to Morrissey records soon. And he's, he's in his underpants... He's in his underpants, reading Piglet's um, journal, playing with himself. Oh, Jesus Christ, college cop. Well, I never thought I'd be watching this. Again, unthor unorthodox police procedures, masturbating with evidence. And now he's, he's having a fantasy about him spanking Helena. And she's in a cage. And she's getting unnecessary with herself as well. And she's wearing the piglet mask. Reading the piglet diary. And it cuts cuts back to naked college cop. Drinking. Fantasising. Looking for tissues. Oh, they've gone to a Chinese restaurant that's called the Mark Yu Restaurant. And now he's gone to see the old guy who's a World War Two expert. Oh, and it was used. It's a clicker snapper, and it was used, and it was like make one click, and then if it was you, if you made a click, and then in the distance you had a return click, you knew there was a friend nearby, or you could use it for codes. College cop has summoned Jack. Oh, now he appears to also have been a client for. Um, uh, one of Linda's clients. I mean, she was, it looks like she was involved with just about everyone in this town. I'm surprised that old Codger didn't say stuff about it like, oh yeah, I remember, I remember the Second World War like it was yesterday. In fact, I was telling my dominatrix Linda about it just last night. Another, uh, another sleazy bar. Oh God, from this angle, College Cup has the same hair do I do. At least I don't have a moustache. Helene has arrived with some bloke on a leash. And college, he's drunk. So uh, Helen has switched and it's confused college cop. So he's had another drink. The white balance. 
Oh god, the white balance went out of, out of kilter. Ah. That's a, a thousand suns there. Wasn't there a murder at some point? Oh, we've just seen the boom at the bottom of the shot. And then it's hypnosis. And now we've got um, a double speed sex scene with... this. Who this blonde woman is, I don't know. I think, possibly, she could be... Uh, this could be a flashback or a flash forward. I don't know. Anyway, college copies handcuffing into the bed. And uh, I don't even know if this is real or imagined or what. And it's more double vision. Now it's all gone into slow motion. Fade to black. Shot off church. And then they walk into the police station. Establishing shot. Church. Interior police station. And college cop's got a new different hat. He's just had a real sort of uh, telling off from the, the chief. Oh, and college cop started smoking. And he's just took a cigarette away and there was loads on it still. And now it's gone into widescreen. <laughs> Suddenly that it's in widescreen and, uh, and it's funky cop music and it's cut to a college cop montage of him doing cops, cop stuff, asking suspects. Drinking cup of tea, having sex and spanking witnesses, <laughs> making them wear pig masks. Oh, oh, Linda's last last phone call was to Todd. Linda phoned Todd. Todd's boots have mud on them, according to the CSIs. Like they obviously had some very scientific machine they used to, to, to identify that. And uh, there were some tracks. So now they've charged at Todd's house with a guns drawn. Todd's locked himself in the bathroom and he's going to blow his own head off. Todd put his gun in his mouth to blow his head off. And college cop, he drew his own gun and pointed it at him. Anyway, his head's blown off and it's splattered blood all over college cop. Go call our friends the coroners. Invite them to the party. Tell them to bring a body bag. And a mop. Oh, college cop is so cool. I want to be college cop when I grow up cool one-liners alcohol problem occasionally smokes cigarettes and gets nasty with witnesses and now college cops going into an Irish pub it's that part of the evening nothing good happens in an Irish pub and he's sat at the piano about to give us a tune Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. And he's just imagined some woman taking off her clothes for some reason. Yeah, he's sad at the piano. Sad. Again, that's what happens when you go into Irish bars. Drink, listen to emotional music, get sad, and then have a fight. And he's, uh, he's showing up at um, Helena's again. Drunk out of his brain. And uh, she said, do you know what you want now? And he says, I want you. <laughs> That's it. The end. Well, not the end of the film. Nor the end of the review. Not quite, anyway. No, it's the end of the spoilers for this film. Why? Well, it could be that uh, watching this particular movie awakened my uh, inner sadist. And I delight now in the thought of keeping all the people watching this dangling on a hook, wondering what's going to happen. But it isn't. The reason that there's no spoilers, is that I think this film has a very thought-provoking and challenging ending. And I'd like you to watch the whole movie for yourself. So, there's going to be links below that you can follow and uh, give the movie a watch. Now, as to the review, um, negative things first. As with many things on this channel, it's cheap. Very cheap. Um, also, there are bits of technical 
ineptitude um, in terms of editing and production. Little stumbles. Uh, but, and we're getting to the positive now, all of those things, the, the lack of budget, the occasional visible boom and camera, uh, the occasional scenes that seem to go nowhere, uh, aside from those things, the movie is fantastic. It is so full of style, so full of passion. Uh, it's got ambition coming out its ears, and so often those ambitions hit the mark. It deals with big ideas, and it deals with them well. I can't imagine a big budget mainstream movie tackling these kind of issues and doing it in anywhere near a competent way. Um, so, Cricket Snapper. It's a genuine find, and a genuine classic that, that I can't believe I've never heard of before, and I'm delighted to have seen it. Now, just before I go on with the actual rating, uh, there was one thing in the credits that I, I thought uh, was kind of interesting, so I'll, I'll show it on the screen now. A good point to remember, I mean, it, it's it's great to see this sort of like sexy, scary, bloody gory type movies, but it's important not to, to sort of stereotype subcultures of people uh, or their behaviours as being negative just because it happens to make, be for, make for really good horror movies. Um, so that's an important thing to remember. Right, the review. Well, I was going to give it an X for excellent, but after two nights of keeping coming back to it and keeping thinking about it and keeping wondering without dropping any spoilers, and this is so difficult for me, without dropping spoilers, wondering what I would do in that situation. What would I do if I was confronted with that? Uh, it's been upgraded. It's a double X. The first double X, extremely excellent. Right, well, this is nearly it. Uh, one last thing, uh, and a tiny bit of housekeeping. As you're probably aware, as I've uh, said on quite a few occasions, I'm trying to grow this channel, both in terms of spreading awareness about these movies and also about just genuinely having a YouTube presence and also about trying to reach out to an audience for um, the Council Comics publications. So because I don't know so much about uh, this this YouTube or marketing lark, I've gone out to some influencers to try and get some tips about how to uh, get my product to resonate in the minds of you people out there. And, uh, and they've given me a little showreel. So why don't you have a watch? Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much for, for spending some time with us and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe and comment. But especially comment because it'd be really nice just to chat with people in the, in, the, in the comments. See you later, my friends. Take care and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>